Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Voss and welcome again to Awesome 80s on Fox League. This is where we showcase great games from a fabulous era. And when you're talking about the 80s, it is impossible not to mention Parramatta. And often, they played in five grand finals, 81, 82, 83, 84 and 86. They won on four occasions. But the match I want to showcase here is from a year they didn't make the grand final, 1985. It still has the amazing talent of the likes of Sterling and Kenny and Cronin and Price. But in this match, the minor preliminary semi-final of 1985, they play the Penrith Panthers, who had qualified for the finals for the first time ever. Sterling feeds again. It's been allowed to go. Parramatta scrum win. Kenny comes the blind. And Kenny is flung to the ground. 25 metres out from his own line. Well, this will be a penalty, will it? No, he's told them told to play on. Ella gets it back inside to Kenny. Kenny across to Stan Jurd. Jurd met by Goodwin, gives it to Mosley. Mosley decides to take the ball to ground. 34 metres out from his own line. This is Lillis. Here's the lower grade results for you. Balmain 12, Manly 6 under 23s, Canterbury 23, Cronulla 4, reserve grade. So it's exit Manly 23s and Cronulla reserves from the 1985 competition. This is Mark Lowy near the halfway line. That's four tackles gone for the Eels. Here's Sterling now. David Lydiard. Now five tackles. And here's Sterling with the cross kick. That ball is bouncing in the end goal. Penrith are going to have to pick it up. Greg Alexander's there, but here comes the defence. He's beaten them both. Now he's been taken a couple of metres into the field of play, but that's a good effort by, by uh, Alexander, and he's hurt. Well, I saw nothing in the tackle that looked illegal. He did a mighty fine job here. He got inside Taylor, and he got around Mosley. Now, let's, ke let's keep with him. Laurie went in with Lydiard, and that's where it all happened. Tim Sheens, the man that has taken Penrith to their first semi-final ever. Well, of course, that shock start the try for Parramatta, but they've hit back pretty well. They seem to have consolidated, mate. Yeah, Parramatta are very dangerous early in the game always. Uh, they come out with a great enthusiasm and, uh, and very dangerous early. They've got the try, but to the Penrith Blake's credit, they've, they've held their guns and now they're consolidated. And if they can hit back, they're well in this game. Well, Parramatta, of course, finding gaps out, out wide, but to my mind, this uh, Parramatta pack certainly isn't getting any respect in the middle of the road. No, they're, uh, they're very, very willing, the Panther blokes, mate. They're, uh, they're not beaten with yet, and Parramatta are going to have to work very hard to, to advance any further in the semi-finals. And it's Canterbury tomorrow. Canterbury tomorrow, mate, yeah. Thanks for that. Now, you know, it's right to tune into a... That hit the referee. That hit the referee. It'll come down for a scrum now. Had it have happened in Parramatta's half, let me tell you, it would not have been a Parramatta halfback feed. Kenny, oh, picked up by Taylor. Ten metres into Penrith's area. I was about to say, now you know what it's like to tune into a private discussion between two Bulldogs. Graham Hughes and Phil Gould, eh? Canterbury tomorrow, eh? I reckon the Tigers will have something to say about that. This is Lillis now. We'll have that for you tomorrow night. Six through 7.30. Ten sports covering the NEC big games. And here's Cronin off a Kenny special. And Cronin's in for a try. Well, it's been the Crone and Ella Kenny combination that's been doing all the damage, and here it's the number th the number six and the number three. Mick Cronin and Brett Kenny. A great pass by Kenny, offloaded the ball to Cronin, and he knew the way to the try line. Here it is again. Sideline. This kick is an awful kick, really. It's gone way across the face of the uprights. No goal for Cronin, but Parramatta leading Penrith by 10 points to nil. It's Jeff Fennick, the world bantamweight champion, together with Mario. Fed by Sterling, in and out, won by the Yale. Sterling runs to the open side. He's held there by Clements, the lock. And they're just about... Uh, 11 metres out from the line. Anything could happen from here. Steve Sharp takes it up as a settler. That's the second tackle for Parramatta as it's played back to Mosley's knocked on again, that dummy half. And, of course, we come through the two weekends of semis to the final, then the grand final. 
and we'll be starting our telecast at 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll have a live coverage of all grades on grand final day, a history-making telecast for you, and I'm sure it's one that you're going to enjoy. The statistician just fell on the floor. Away to Kenny, now to Cronin. He's uh, sweating on Cronin and eating up every little uh, available piece of opportunity, really, to, to have a good game against Michael Cronin. His brother is uh, plenty of tried, plenty of failed, but Izzard is certainly giving it his best shot here today. Here's Kenny away from Simmons. And he's into an opening! Kenny inside 32! That's uh, Taylor! Taylor around the corner for Groat! Groat beats Alexander and scores! Harry Groat scores in the scoreboard corner after Kenny had slid through an opening and then basically did the rest. One from two so far. Beautiful looking kick. He's got it, Cronin from the sideline. Parramatta zooming away to a 16 points to nil lead. Gonzalez tackled by Sterling. Alexander, Izzard. Long ball from Izzard. Oh, it's bounced badly. Oh, Lydiard's come up with the ball, one arm and all. Uh, this could be a penalty. No, Roberts has allowed the advantage, if you like, to go to Parramatta. Here's Sterling popping it inside for Ella. And Ella will play the ball. 20 metres out from the uh, the Panthers' line. Parramatta looking for their fourth try. Cronin to Kenny to Lydiard. He's going for the corner. He's got his foot down. It's a try. It's a try to David Lydiard. Try number four for the Eels. Penrith with no answer to them today. Leading by 20 points to nothing. I'd never back against him. Here he goes. Left the boot all right. I like it. I like it. It's a goal for Cronin from the sideline again. 22 to nil. Parramatta leading Penrith. The NEC semi final. Same tunnel. Sterling decides to kick on the first, and up they go for it. David Burns has taken it nicely. He's out of the tackle of Brett Kenny. He's lost a shoe. He's running with one shoe missing, but I'll tell you what, he's picked up Ben Gonzalez. Eric Gross chases Gonzalez. Gross got him. Good chase. Good run by Gonzalez. I thought he would have beaten Gross. His lob to Clements. They've got a score. No, they bombed it. Well, that was easy for them, really. And there's David Lydiard, a rather forlorn sight, leaving the Sydney cricket ground at the break. Sharp now. Mm, hang on. Here comes the here comes the replacement for Parramatta. And Tim Sheens has decided. Well, it's no use waiting. I've, I've got I've got to do this. He's going to make wholesale sackings as uh, Cronin sends Laurie into an opening. Laurie is tackled 11 metres out from the Penrith line. And four tackles have gone. It's gone out to Sterling. He pops the ball for Steve Ella. Ella is tackled. Eight metres out from the line. Five gone. Sterling's on the blind. Here he is with the ball. Short pass for Kenny. Kenny flops it over the top to Growth. And Growth again goes through Alexander. No fault of the youngster. You can't stop the big fella when you've got one metre to work in. And Eric Gross scores his second try. Can he make it three from the sideline out of three? It doesn't look that bad, but it's just wide. And so the scoreline in the NEC big game semi-final. Parramatta 26, Penrith nil. Brett Lobb. What's the word on Taylor, Graham? Well, he was just suffering from some minor cramps, so uh, obviously there was no sense in leaving him out there. OK. This is Simmons, a long ball over to Wolf, and Wolf held back the ball. Was it? Oh! There he goes, Brett Kenny! That was the intercept he took in the 81 grand final. Then he gives it to Ella. Ella inside to Kenny. Oh, boy, oh, boy, do you reckon they can't put it together? Kenny and Ella magic. 
We can see here it was a loose pass by the Penrith Panthers, but beautifully read by Brett Kenny. He knew where that pass was going, put his hand in the right position, came up with it, and here's the tremendous combination of these two great Parramatta players. The ball was flicked to Ella, he headed for the sideline, called Kenny back inside him. Kenny took the scissors pass and headed over between the uprights. And there's the kick. Straight between the uprights from Michael Cronin. Parramatta swelling their lead to a massive 32 points to nil. <laughs> Gone somewhere else. But here's Parramatta back off the line dropout now. Maisley running around Price. Price to the 22 and slithering along the ground there. Worming his way towards the, uh, the try line. From Don Price to Peter Sterling to Brett Kenny, back to Sterling. Dummies to Cronin, steps inside off his left, floats it over the top to Sharp, goes back to Don Price, back it goes to Michael Mosley, and that's a try. Mosley scores for Parramatta in front of the MA Noble stand. 21 out, 15 in, and he's, he's got it round. It's come in for a goal. There's the score. A whopping 38 to nothing. Parramatta leading Penrith in the NEC big game semi-final. Five metres from the line. Five tackles gone. Eden's there. Spins it across to Kenny. A short ball for Cronin. Then it's with Ella. Ella does two steps off his left. Puts the kick through. Gets a bit of a shoulder up. The ball is still loose. This will be a try. I think No, he's been bounced in goal. Bounced in goal by Steve Sharp. And it'll come out to the 22 for the restart. I was talking about Matt Goodwin earlier on. Here's the, the slow-mo of Steve Eller. Here's the bounce ball in goal. Fenton, outside the 32 and to the halfway line. Well, look at the chase is on. Look at growth. He's taking gigantic strides across the ground. E. Fairdigham gave him 30 metres start and picked him up in 50. Now it's Alexander. This is Trudger. Izzard is in. It's a try for the Panthers. Alexander with a relatively simple kick. But he hasn't had much practice today. Nevertheless, he's kicked the goal. It's 38 points to six in favour of Parramatta. Mosley. There's the siren. It's over. 38 to six to Parramatta. Welcome back to Awesome 80s on Fox League. Before the break, highlighted the amazing talents of the Parramatta Eels. The other champion side, powerhouse of the 80s, no doubt, was the Canterbury Bulldogs. Four-time Premiership winner, 1980, 1984, 1985, 1988. Could have been five. They came close in 1986. And along the way, in qualifying for the grand final, they demolished some teams. One of those was the Western Suburbs Magpies in round 16. Sit back and enjoy some of the great players in that Bulldog side. The Mortimers, Terry Lamb, Phil Sigsworth and Steve Folks. Canterbury running towards the Randwick end of the Sydney Cricket Ground and Andrew Farrah gets us underway. Coming down for Cogger to take it back. Trevor wearing the number six tonight. This is Brett Clark in number two. Reminding you, they played an eight-all draw in their first encounter this year. First Winfield Cup encounter. It's Craig Ellis. He's tackled just outside the 32 line. Feller. And already one can see an urgency in the Canterbury defence. They're hitting in twos and threes. There's uh, Derek Fox. The Englishman puts the kick in, going down. Straight to Phil Sigsworth, based... Just outside his 22, he's made a 10-metre run and he's met by the Magpies' defence. In the centre of the ground, with Canterbury repeating, guarding the Paddington end of the field. This is O'Brien. 1984 grand final hero for Canterbury. Billy Johnston, a little dummy out to the open side and then they hit it back to the blind. And off comes the headgear, number 11, wearing it, Peter Kelly. And 
the, the penalty goes to Canterbury Bankstown. And again, I've got to point out to you just how concentrated and severe this Canterbury defence is. West with the ball are not getting past the previous play the ball. And that's not... Uh, it's not a bad trick if you can keep it up, and Canterbury are certainly doing that in the opening minutes. Five gone now for Wests. Here comes the kick. Charge down, came off the back of Folks. It's play on. Oh, what a bounce for Folks! And Steve Folks goes in to score. Well, I outlined uh, the rule that covers the charge down yesterday. The ball rising off the boot of the kicker. It can be charged down with any part of the body. And this hit Steve Folks on the back. And then, of course, he pirouetted, got a tremendous bounce, and away goes the Canterbury number nine and the New South Wales second rower. Steve Folks scores the first try of the match. In many respects, this was a try that was a result of constant pressure. Canterbury being applying all sorts of pressure to Western Suburbs. They couldn't get out of their own quarter. They tried to do that with a clearing kick. It wasn't a good one. Folks charged it down, picked it up, and, of course, he was fast enough to carry through and go over for the try. An easy one for Lamb. Flags up. Scoreline, Canterbury 6. West's nil. Steve Mortimer. Terry Lamb. Steve Mortimer. Beautiful work. Gillespie. He gave a pass. He knew he'd made a mistake. He cleaned it up himself. And look at them. Look at them bouncing this ball around between them. It's the Peter Mortimer and his brother Chris. It's a forward pass. Barnes has called them back. Deserved a better result, really. And back at the cricket ground, the congratulations are being handed out to Rod Petherbridge. The scrum went down, West fed it. Petherbridge came in from full back. He made the extra man, and that's as simple as it was. Making that extra man, he was able to run into an opening. He crossed the 32 and the 22 and was going in to score. Clear of Sigsworth, the, the nearest chaser. Here he is head on, this big lump of a fellow, one of the form players all year long. And uh, Rod Petherbridge, the try scorer for Western Suburbs. One of the gambles, of course, you take in live television is taking a commercial, but it seemed a, a sweet and opportune time to take it. There it was on record, Rod Petherbridge scoring a try. A garbologist? <laughs> Done. Oh! Yes! Kelly! Yes! Peter Mortimer! Away now for Billy Johnston! It's a try! That's great, uh, great support rugby league by Canterbury Bankstown. Billy Johnston scores the try. This was simply a case of players taking it ahead, drawing the defence, committing the defence, looking for support that was ever present. Dunn and Kelly and Peter Mortimer and then Billy Johnston scoring a great rugby league try. Just outside the 22. Same tunnel. Lamb. Cogger realising that Canterbury are in... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're certainly in a ruthless mood. Oh, six worth! Over the halfway, here's the support. Guess who? Barber, Terry Lamb, over the 22. Petherbridge chases Peter Mortimer. He's going in to score a Canterbury try and a beauty. Phil Sixworth was the man who made the break. I think one of the features at the cricket ground tonight was uh, an appearance by the Mean Machine, uh, the swimming team, but I think we're watching the Rugby League Mean Machine at the moment. This, well, uh, Steve Mortimer was faking for a penalty. Now, they've got a penalty, Canterbury. It was uh, a shepherd on Western Suburbs. Mortimer kicked. Freeman became an obstruction. And Mortimer appealed for the penalty. Um, there's the obstruction for Shepherd. And while Steve Mortimer was complaining to the referee for not getting a penalty for being knocked over late, they picked up a penalty anyway a little bit further down the ground. So Steve dropped off his complaint. <laughs> as uh, Canterbury take the tap. A long ball from Billy Johnston. So too from Steve Mortimer and Terry Lamb. It's come down off the shoulder to Andrew Farrer. Langmack. Langmack! 10-metre line. 
put down by Terry Lamb. Play by Petherbridge. Crooks. Dunn and Chris Mortimer making the tackle. Well, I'm almost getting a sore neck from having it uh, having it on this angle, watching West, watching Western Suburbs trying to get the ball up out of their own area in Canterbury. Put Drummond's put it down. O'Brien will score. O'Brien scores for Canterbury after Drummond, who's having... Well, he's having an unhappy visit to the Sydney Cricket Ground. That's the kindest I can be. They're fourth. And Kitty just stabbed it, and he got it. 26 points to four. Kelly and Folks making the tackle there. Bilberger. Back to Fowler. Petherbridge taken by Farrah. Cogger, Fox, Williams. Long pass put down by Henderson, picked up by Lamb. Tackle by Schubert. Sigsworth. Ah, oh, good fend by Sigsworth. There's a try. Right in front of the MA Noble, the Bradman stand people. Sigsworth. Having a good game tonight. But in fact, we're uh, three quarters of the way through. Webster. Jumper number 26, formerly with the Balmain Club. Bilberger. And Lamb goes away with it. Making a big run inside the 32 and the 22. Brett Clark comes at him. He runs away from him. And Terry Lamb goes in to score his own try. Well, the way Bill Bidu was carrying the football, or the way he was hanging on to the football, there was every chance that Canterbury were going to take it off him. And that's exactly what Terry Lamb did. He goes up. Dunn gets under him with Terry Lamb. The ball is just sitting up there like an ice cream on a cone. And Terry Lamb takes it off him and then runs the best part of 50 metres. Brett Clark tried to run him down, but Lamb is away and running. Good performance tonight by Lamb. And he's got this one too. So he's certainly online with his goal kicking as well. 38 points to four in favour of the Bulldogs. Here's Schubert now taking it out to the 22. Getting a one-hander off in desperation to Brett Clark. And a lot of the things West have had to do tonight have been out of desperation, more than, more than frustration, probably. This is done. And Canterbury coming up with the ball on the turnover <clears throat> on the West 22. So a, a, great, a great opportunity for them to extend the scoreline even further as Gillespie gets it off to Terry Lamb. He's inside the 10. Steve Mortimer backs him up. And Steve Mortimer goes in to score another Canterbury try. Lee Crooks kicks off. Big kick down to Farrell. O'Brien comes away. I suppose the interest now for, for Canterbury Bankstown supporters is to see if they can get past the 52 points that were that were posted, posted yesterday by Manly, and that's not beyond them the way they're playing. Chris Mortimer. Steve Mortimer and now Kelly. Little short ball away, and look at Gillespie go. Over the halfway, finds support in Sigsworth and Langmack. Langmack runs out of extras. No, he doesn't. He finds Dunn. Back it goes for Langmack. Langmack looking for support to try and keep it alive. 30 metres up. Centre of the ground. Big run by Gillespie. Terry Lamb. Long ball. Folks, short pass. Farrah. Down the line goes Peter Mortimer. Tackle by Schubert. Not in the touch. Good piece of work there by Peter Mortimer. Kelly. Kelly, five metres out from the line. That's where they've won the game, Canterbury. That hard work up the middle. Kelly's getting up to play at five metres out. Steve Mortimer, grab a kick. Oh, and a oh, beautiful bounce for Langmack. It hit a Western Suburbs player, Alan Feller. Came off his chest, landed on its point and bounced into the chest of Paul Langmack. Fancy copping this mob playing like they are tonight. Canterbury leading by 48 to 4 now. Fox tackle just outside the 22.
change for Canterbury, Graham? They're about to rest uh, their state second rower, a guy that certainly deserves one, Steve Phopes, after his heavy commitments the last month or so. And uh, the man that will be going on will be David Boyd in 22. Lee Crooks just took a nasty knock as he went in to make... Uh, well, he was looking for the ball, but he was tackled without it. And Lee is still down injured. He's in a bit of... A little bit of pain out there. You should have seen the next tackle that Canterbury put on, on on Webster. He brought the ball up and he was hit like a sledgehammer by Folks and by Gillespie. These fellows have not relaxed their defence one bit since the opening minutes of the match. Look at these tackles. Two and three in every one of them. Kelly and Dunn making the tackle on Johnny Bilberger. Fox. That's another good bomb by Fox. Spot on that one. Sigsworth. You know, Lamb's scored all the points, I suppose, and you've talked about how the... The big forwards have taken it up and kept that roll on, but by Jeff, I reckon Sigsworth's had a big game here tonight. Billy Johnston. About eight metres out from the line. Canterbury's still unable to crack the half century. Can they do it here? Steve Mortimer's grubber kick. It came off the hands of Petherbridge. That's a try. Yes, that's a try to O'Brien. No question about it. And unfortunately for the Magpies, they, they caught the Bulldogs on precisely the wrong night. 54 points to four. And have a look at it there. Folks, Johnston, Peter Mortimer, Sigsworth, Lamb, Steve Mortimer and Langmack the tries. Steve O'Brien scored two tries. He was the only one to cross for more than one. Lamb kicked nine goals.